Hey YouTube, it's Jeff with Darkman Metals. This is going to be the second video in a three-part series on my interpretation of stainless steel utensils. Uh, in the last video, I showed how to make a fork, and if you haven't seen that video first, you might want to go back and watch it, because the spoon picks up and references a couple of the processes that we did in the fork, uh, and I'm not going to be showing it again. Uh, this video, of course, is going to be the spoon, and the next video after that is going to be the knife. Now, uh, in the last video, I talked about sharing with you what one of my favorite tools in the shop is, and I'm going to be showing you that in just a minute. Uh, the spoon is actually going to pick up at what I call the preformed fork stage because the handles, if you notice, of the spoon and the fork are virtually identical. That's because the preform for the fork is the spoon. I simply cut the tines off and weld the bowl on. Here it is, YouTube. This is hands down one of my favorite things in the shop. Uh, this is a three ton arbor press, and this has a lot of history behind it. Um, it is extremely useful, but that, that's not the reason it's one of my favorite tools. This is just a beautiful piece. Uh, it was made here in the United States, it was actually made up in New Hampshire. Uh, the company name is Greenard. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but it is spelled G R E E N E R D. And uh, this predates World War II. And the reason I know that is because during World War II, in the war effort, there was a small machine shop in Norwalk. Uh, it was a place called Fodor Farms. And this was used in their shop. So this helped make things for the World War II war effort. Um, it's an amazing piece. It's all original condition. I haven't done anything to restore it. And I do have the original base for this press. It's currently sitting on the table but uh, the tabletop is being supported by the original base. Uh, I'm not going to show you that now because it's just no light under there, but my goal is when I move and get a bigger shop, I'll simply return this to its original configuration on its base and uh, just, you know, kind of marvel over it and admire it for what it is. Uh, I always think when I have a piece of equipment like this, who might have used it you know, what did it make, where did the parts go uh, that this thing helped produce. It just really stirs the imagination. It's one of the reasons why I like old tools and machines and things like that. But let me skip the chit chat and uh, get to the point and I will show you what I use this for in the spoon and fork making process. You may remember in the last video I talked about having a jig for making this bend. Now it may seem like a relatively insignificant thing, but um, I do a lot of these in a single shot. Um, I will make this U pattern um, probably about a hundred of them at a time and I'll store the ones that I don't need until I'm ready to produce the rest of the spoon or the fork. Uh, this is that jig and all it is um, it's a piece of steel. I've cut out some areas where the rod will sit in place and I smoothed everything out so it won't scratch or damage the rod under the press and I have a piece of round stock welded to a shank which fits inside the arbor press and that allows me to get the bends in my material. Uh, this is a stop so really when I'm making these things I only need to mark one of them and I use that to set up the jig once the stop is set up, I can go ahead and make as many as I need. And as you can see, or as you may, whoops, or as you may be able to imagine, when you're making a hundred of these at a time, this is a really handy setup but I will be coming back to the Arbor Press later on in the video to show you a little bit more uh, on how I use this uh, in conjunction with making the spoons. Alright guys, so let's talk about the construction of the spoon. The handle is the same exact handle on the forks and the reason I know that is because not only do I make them but I use a fork to make the spoon. I simply cut the tines off of the fork but this is one of the fork preforms and all I did was come in with a pair of bolt cutters, like I used in the last video, to cut the tines off. So that gives me the handle for the spoon. The next thing I need is the bowl. Now, obviously I can't throw this in the forge and 
forge a bowl out of wire. But what I do is I come along, I have a 16 gauge piece of stainless steel, and yes, I cut a bunch of these blanks out at once using the plasma cam. Uh, whoops. You can cut these out on whatever you want. Uh, like I said, 16 gauge, and it measures about an inch and five eighths by just about two inches and an eighth. So that's the size of the bowl. The next step is TIG welding the bowl to the handle. Alright guys, one of the things I did forget to mention, uh, I heated that end up with a torch and I flattened it out because it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to weld. Um, I am going to be using a TIG welding process on this. Uh, I'm going to be running my machine probably about 150 amps using straight argon um, and the stainless steel that the bowl uh, is made out of is the same alloy as the rod uh, which is very important and if you watch my first video uh, you'll understand why. So I'm not going to tell you so you can go back and watch the first video. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to weld this together uh, but first I'm going to try to do something with the camera. Don't know if it's going to work or not but uh, I'll see if I can get a halfway decent shot of the welding process but who knows. You may notice that I am sitting right on top of my anvil. Uh, I've got, this is at least a 3 8 thick, it might even be a full half inch thick piece of aluminum. Um, this is going to act as a heat shield uh, against the table of the anvil and I know some of you might be thinking well wouldn't aluminum melt faster than stainless steel? Yes that is true but aluminum also dissipates heat so fast that the stainless steel will puddle before the aluminum even starts to melt. Uh, in school this is the setup we used to use on our workbenches when we were learning to TIG weld stainless steel, so I know for a fact it's going to work. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to straighten an arc, and I'm going to see if I can meld these two together. And we will go from there. Alright, the back is fairly well incorporated, so I'm going to come up to the front, and this time I'm going to use filler material, and I'm going to weld the spoon from this side. And this is going to be a little bit difficult to get on camera, but bear with me. back to the back and add a little bit of filler. Make sure this stays nice and strong so I don't want to fall apart when someone's eating soup. And there you go. Now, yes, this is kind of lame. Um, let's try and get this off here. No, I messed up the camera too much. Yes, I duct taped a pair of Shade 5 glasses to my camera. Hey, this is a low budget studio. You're not working with Spielberg here. But anyway, that is the weld. Front and back. Now the next step is going to be to put this in the forge and form the bowl. But before I do that, I want to bring you back over to the Arbor Press and show you the jig that I have to make the bowl. Here is the preformed spoon. Uh, you can tell that I have a little bit of blistering on this side of the metal. That's how I know that I got a really good penetration. I don't need to go that crazy, but um, eh, it happens sometimes. This is going to have um, kind of like a hand hammered texture to it anyway so this stuff in the back is actually going to disappear into the metal after uh, I forge it a little bit. But to get the initial shape of the bowl that's where we come back to the Arbor Press. Now this particular setup here 
Uh, what I have done is I went out and I found two identical ball bearings. Uh, we took one and we used it as a sacrificial ball bearing. Uh, I welded a long handle to it and we put this block of steel in the forge. And as it got hot, I held the handle and Dana came in with a sledgehammer and without killing me, managed to make an impression inside the block. Now, of course, that totally messed up the, uh, the finish on the other ball bearing, so we just threw that in the scrap bin. The second one, uh, I ground a flat on one side, welded a shank to it, and that fits inside the arbor press. But since both ball bearings were identical, they fit perfectly together. Uh, the only other thing that I did, I took a piece of quarter inch thick plate, and I welded the form to the plate, so I've got a nice, firm platform for the Arbor Press. Now, if you've never used an Arbor Press before, uh, how this works, inside this ram, there is a set screw on the side. So anything that fits inside of this shank, you can use as tooling. So you can make just about anything you want, in any shape that you want. It tightens down with an Allen screw, and you're ready to go. Now what I do is I usually let this sit inside of the bowl. There you go. That way I know it's lined up. So when I come over with a spoon, all I have to do is put this in here. I do this when it's hot, and I will form the bowl. Now that's only the rough forming. Uh, I will go back with a wooden block and hand hammer and texture this a little bit. But let's go over to the forge and I will show you uh, the forging process. You already saw how I make the handle. That, that doesn't change at all. But what I am going to do is come in with a ball peen hammer and I'm going to kind of massage these welds um, into the material of the bowl and give this a hand hammered texture. So a lot of the uh, imperfections of the weld uh, will disappear and it'll make it look like it was one piece of metal. So let's go over to the forge right now. Come on. sure to do it at a red heat. You don't want to do it at a gray heat. You could crack it. Luckily it doesn't take that long to get hot again.
have seen this on one of my other videos. This fits in the hardy hole and wraps around the sides of the anvil and it gives me a wooden work surface that doesn't bounce around all that much. I'm going to be using that right now. And this is going to be the inside of the bowl. trying to dish it. I could dish it this way, but I don't want to. Because I want to have the bowls look relatively consistent, just like my forks. That's why I'm using the jig. so far. I don't know how you can see that. That's the bottom of the weld right there. So that's the bottom of the spoon. That's going to be the inside of the bowl. some final shaping over the wood block. did off camera was to take and uh, wire wheel this very well. Uh, I have a wire wheel on my bench grinder and that's what I use to clean uh, most of the spoon except for the inside of the bowl. For that I use the cordless drill and that guy right there. Um, that just lets me get inside the contour of the bowl a heck of a lot better than trying to shove this tight up against the wire wheel on my bench grinder. And I do want to take the time to point something out for you real quick. Uh, this is the spoon that we just got done making. And this is the prototype that I had. And I have made a couple of spoons in between these two, but this is the first, this is the latest. And I want to put these side by side. The transition between this handle and bowl is a much nicer transition than this. Also, on the back, you can see there's a little bit more of a glob of material there, and this is a little bit more incorporated. Now, I've been TIG welding for, oh God, at least five or six years now. And stainless steel is one of my favorite materials to weld, but I'm not used to welding on things this small. 
it just goes to show you that the more you practice, the better you get at something. Uh, the other thing that I want to add is if you are selling these to a living history uh, group of folks like I am, don't tell them they're handmade if you're using technology and welding and all that stuff. Um, a, uh, it's always better to be truthful than to try to deceive people. There are folks out there that are like, oh wow, you use TIG welding, a plasma cam, and all this technology. Nah, they might think it's really awesome. Or they might say, well, I'm looking for something that's traditionally made and I want to support a traditional artist. And truthfully, if that was the case, uh, I would try to figure out a way to make these out of, um, you know, that era of technology. I wouldn't, first of all, I probably wouldn't use stainless steel. Um, second, I would go ahead and I would learn the steps to make the tools, especially if I had somebody who was interested in ordering them from me. And uh, believe me when I say that I am truthful, anybody who wants to know how I make these when I'm sitting at my table, I will tell them. Um, if I was trying to keep this a secret, I would be out here posting it all over the internet trying to get people to come to my channel. So yes, I am very honest when it comes to this sort of thing. And you know what? It hasn't turned anybody away from my table yet. So the next video I'm going to make is going to be the knife, which is over here somewhere. So I am looking forward to making that. Um, I really didn't think I was going to get through the spoon video today. I did the fork and the spoon on the same day, but I'm running out of time in the shop, so the knife is probably going to have to wait till tomorrow. But until then, uh, I will be thinking about the video and uh, different things that I could share with you guys. I uh, really like doing that, and I'm glad that you are still here hanging out with me. And uh, yeah, it's just one of the things that makes life a little more interesting, getting a chance to communicate with people through the web. Uh, they give me critiques on my work, they give me advice. Some not always good advice, but advice nonetheless. And I do value everybody who watches this channel and does provide feedback to whatever level that feedback is. Until the next video, this is Jeff at Darku Metals, and I will see you again soon.